Don't be confused by the logo on my shirt or the logo that you're seeing on the top left corner of your TV screen. This is the same show, The Situation Room, which comes to you from our studios at number five, Ola Hansen Lane at Tesano in Accra. And this is Channel One TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadu. And as always, my colleague in the same shirt, Sami Riafe. Sami, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's Maru. exciting. New very, color. Very, very, they, very. they say the color is called turquoise. I, mean, I don't know color in that. I, mean, I would call it green, but officially it's called turquoise. I also called it green until I was corrected. By you, you don't Frema. know color? I didn't know. But it's fine. It was Frema who told me the name. I thought it was green. All I was calling it yeah, green, 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 green. Hey, yeah, green. Oh. Remember, hey, yeah, green. Oh. I have a green switch hey, campaign. Hey, Kube, oh. hey, Kube. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It gives you a good feel. And, um, you know that we've been with you since um, last year when we launched this program. We told you we we're going to be working with you into the elections of 2024. Uh, it's midway to the elections, and we've just rebranded briefly, but we are going to execute and deliver for you the same thing that we've given you as a promise at the beginning of this show. The Situation Room will analyze the big political stories, the election-related matters. We are here with you until election 2024, Results are declared, and we know who the next president of the republic is. And so, we crave your indulgence to stay with us. We'll be back after this to roll out our plan for today. You're welcome back. This is the Situation Room on Channel One TV, broadcasting from Tesano in Accra, Ghana, West Africa, Africa, and the world. My name is Omaru Sanda Amadou, and I'm here with Sami Wiafi, our correspondent at the presidency, who is my co-anchor, on this show and today we have a number of things we're going to look at you do know that often we have Musa Dankwa in our studio he's with Global Info Analytics and we've been with him since last year he's done a lot of surveys getting a lot of these things right today we woke up to a publication in front of the national daily the daily graphic which is quoting a poll that has been conducted we'll tell you about that poll results make a few comments about that in fact, we're supposed to host the person who did that poll. Um, he's yet to join us in the studio. If he does, we'll hear from him the methodology he deployed and the outcomes he has. But before then, the registration is over. The next hurdle is a transfer of votes. The transfer of votes is where you registered in constituency A. Let's say you register in Kualiklote constituency, which is what I did some time back. But you are not from Kole Klote per se. You are ordinarily resident in Kole Klote, so you are qualified to register there. However, you've decided that, no, I want to go back to my village to go and vote. What do I do? I go to the Electoral Commission and say, that register, which you opened in Kole Klote, which has my name, kindly remove my name from there and take it to the Shai Osudoku district, which is my original constituency. I want to go and vote there. You, the EC would make you fill a form. They ask you which polling station do you want to vote at. Prove that you are either one resident there now for the past number of months as prescribed by the law, or you hail from that constituency. If you tick these two boxes, then you are qualified. So let's say you registered in the uh, Tema West constituency, but you have since been transferred as a teacher to Tatali Sanguli. What do you do? You go to the Tatali Sanguli District Office of the Electoral Commission and you say to them, remove my vote from Tema West. I was living at Lashibi. Remove it from there. Bring it to Tatali Sanguli. I want to vote here in Tatali Sanguli. It sounds simple. Unfortunately, a lot of the very simple things in this country lead to chaos. And like the registration, we are seeing ugly scenes at the transfer centers. I have seen for the first time a huge crowd at registration centers or transfer centers, which is very shocking. But that's not all. Someone was stabbed. Someone was beaten to pulp. Someone was arrested by the police. And more and more and more things happening. Sami Biafi is my colleague in the newsroom. We've been reporting on these stories, following all the developments. Sami, what's your take on the ugly scenes happening at the transfer centers? It's surprising centers? for a simple exercise, as you mentioned, the voter transfer being chaotic in some areas is really surprising. I'm just transferring my vote from one police station or one constituency to the other, and it's become an issue. The Electoral Commission intervenes and says no political party agent should be present in this. 24 hours or even 48 hours, we saw the Electoral Commission 
reversing this particular decision. And there's chaos everywhere. And then you ask yourself, was the EC right in the first place to have issued that particular directive, or it was wrong to have issued it in the first place? Now, you get people asking a lot of questions in respect of this. I've covered elections for a while. I've seen voter transfer. But I've we seen this quantum of transfers across the country where we are having chaotic incidents. It's just a matter of simple exercise. I'm just moving my vote from year to year. On the ordinary, Umar, we are seeing these ugly things because of mistrust. And I've always said that from registration to transfer to voting, the, the most important thing here is mistrust. Because the political parties do not trust each other, and the political parties do not trust the electoral commission proper, there's always the sentiment for us to protect our own than leaving it in the hands of other people to do it. On the ordinary, it should be the EC personnel, police officers, and then these individuals or voters who want to do their transfer. But because we don't trust ourselves, the political parties want to be there and see everything for themselves. The police are supposed to ensure law and order, but sometimes they are present, and yet you, you see all this violence happen. Then you ask yourself, this is just transfer. What's going to happen during December when they vote proper? And I've always said that this election is a different election altogether. The chaos we've seen in previous election, it may double in this election because this type of election you're going to see is going to be something altogether. We have a former president staging a comeback. And we have a vice president who wants to continue the legacy of his former boss. And these are two different scenarios. We've never seen this in the history of the Ghanaian politics. And so the chaos we are seeing in these registration centers and in the transfer, uh, voter transfer centers, we should expect more if care is not taken during December. Sami, the reason that the suspicion is high and the stakes are very high indeed for this election is that there's something called gerrymandering, which is what I learned in government yeah. in my course in secondary school. So you've decided that you have, so this is constituency A and this is constituency B. Constituency A is a stronghold of party party Q. Now, constituency B, the party Q is not that strong. Yeah. What do you do? You move voters from constituency A and send them to constituency B. B. That is what we are seeing largely happening. So there's a lot of bussing. Mm -hmm. So the political party will decide, okay, last year or last election, we lost this constituency by seven votes or by 500 votes or by 1,000 votes. If we're able to bring 1,000 people whom we are very certain we will be able to vote for us, then we know that this seat will belong to us, yeah. right? Where do we get this 1,000 votes from? Okay, in Ashaiman, we won the last time bigly. Even if we take 1,000 out, Ashaiman, our candidate, will still win. Also, if you go to Lejokuku, our candidate won the last mm -hmm. time. The massive vote he got, even if we take 500 votes from him, he will still win. Yeah. So we'll go to Ashaiman, go to um, uh, Tema yeah. West. Or, or like Joko Kuku, Kuku. We carry those people, put them in a bus, send them to the constituency that you want mm -hmm. them to. So in yesterday, the allegation was that NPP had bus people from Tamale <laughs> to Yendi yeah. to come and register. Now, what happens? Tamale, maybe NPP thinks, are for Tamale Central there. Whatever we, we do, nah, do nah, we cannot win. No win because we have not won Tamale Central. We may not win. But Yendi is our constituency. We won it the last time. What do we do? Let's share up the numbers. So... Tamale Central becomes the constituency where you go and harvest and go and deploy somewhere. That is the allegation the NDC has made. When I put the two of them on Eyewitness News yesterday, the NDC, the NPP official said, it is true, we brought people to the center, but we did not bring them from Tamale Central. We brought them from villages across the country, uh, from the, across the constituency. So let's say you have been transferred to the Yendi district but you are in a rural part of Yendi as a teacher. Yeah. However, you registered in Tamale. What do you do? You have to transfer your vote. It is the duty of the MPP, knowing that this person will vote for them, to organize a vehicle and carry them to the transfer but center. But there was a guarantee that this person will even vote for you. No, you have to be certain before you put them in a bus. And in fact, the fact <laughs> that they even agree to join your bus means something, because they know that this is a blue, white, red bus. The moment you join, you know your conscience. When they are seeing Jama and singing a she radu radu in that, if you are not, you will not feel comfortable. So you will not join. Don't forget that there's an NDC car standing there, there's an MPP car standing there. And at the, at the world level or at the polling station or branch level, everybody knows everybody. You know where, where, so you know who party, is blue. Yes, yes. In my village when I was growing up, the only person who had an MPP poster during elections, Mr. Afo, he's my class three teacher, he's the only one whose house had. Uh, Kufu's poster on it. Everybody in the village had Jonathan Mills. 
and this was me growing up with Rollins in 96 and then Atta Mills. So people knew people. Later on, of course, many more MPP people yeah. came to the village. But at the end of the vote, everybody knew that this who is going to vote for what. This is the total number of people that are going to get the vote. So in the end, it could be true that they went to the rural areas to bring a nurse who is very busy. So they give him a car. Maybe the distance from the center to this place is far. So he decided that, okay, let me go and help this person to come and register here or come and transfer their vote. Otherwise, on election day, they, are, they will not go to Tamale Central to go and vote. They, they will not vote here. Yeah. So Ebeko go there and Kokona. <laughs> it is possible that that is true, but it's also possible that NDC is harvesting votes from Tamale Central to come and, or maybe Tamale North, which they have never won, or Tamale South, which they have never won, to come and shore up their votes there. But then the counter argument from the MPP is that it is not true that we brought them from Tamale. We brought them from the village. And in any case, NDC also brought their people. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a mini bus that they brought. The gentleman said to me, they brought a bus that was containing people, and the bus even had NDC colors. And the NDC officially agreed, yes, it's true, but we also brought them from the rural places. Not so the, the two political parties are all engaged in such They say they agree. And the worst part is that they have to agree on queuing. When you come, <laughs> who should queue first? You know, should you let NDC... In fact, there was even an agreement in one of the constituencies uh, where one of the NDC officers called me and said they agreed that three NDC people would do transfer, then after that, MPP would do three. <laughs> so three go, three go, like that. That was an agreement they had in Botiano, English, a month through, That's what the person said to me. And he said then there was a disagreement at a point, so decided that no more order. Right now, first come, first serve. Otherwise, so at the transfer center, we know that, oh, we moved here, we are MPP4, and we move here NDC4. So MPP, we need three, bruh. Then after that, NDC bring three. That is the thing we are seeing at transfer centers. I find that very painful, very absurd, very, very, very serious. But that's politics for you. Mm -hmm. That's why we have party organizers. Yeah. That's, their that's their duty. So they do that. Now, that, that may be, if you can prove that you are ordinary resident and you can have your vote transferred, it's okay. But what I don't understand is, why do you have a knife at a registration center and stop people, Sami? It's, 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 when you think about it honestly, Umaru, it boils down to the mistrust in all these things. Because if the NDC, assuming, let's use the NDC supporters, may come in there in their numbers, and the MPP supporters or the MPP officials there at these particular registration centers, may feel that the numbers they are bringing is quite huge, is quite large. And they, if care is not taken, they may want to overtake them. They may want to disrupt the entire process. And also come in one way or the other, form of protection. A typical example, Umaru, Kaswa has become famous for the bad reasons. Almost everybody who comes to the Kaswa area has a different perception about Kaswa and what happens there. We have series of activity. Almost every social vice you hear in this country you may want to point hands at Kaswa. Mm -hmm. And there's history. In the last election, even during the registration, accusation against Madam Hawa Kumsen, it came up. The Peace Council, the Catholic Bishop Conference, almost everybody raised issues with it. The NDC also raised a number of issues with it. So in the back of their minds, they feel that this time around, if care is not taken, a similar thing may happen. And so what do I do? Let me go there prepared. Yesterday, you spoke to the NDC parliamentary candidate uh, on, on, on Point Blank. And she said, SPD, that she has a gun. Why? Because she was, she's been threatened on four occasions by the member of parliament for the area, Madaha Akusin. And so in order for her to also protect herself, she has also acquired a gun. A licensed gun. Yes. So if the parliamentary candidate is protecting herself, what about her supporters? Mm -hmm. They may also want to protect themselves. It's the same way MPP supporters may also want to protect themselves. And if I have a gun, you also have a gun. You have a knife, I have a knife. That's and there's Texas. And there's confusion. In order to protect ourselves, we may want to come up with a weapon we have to protect ourselves. And that's exactly what we are seeing in that particular part of town. And I feel it's about time the IGP and the security agencies give Kaswa a bigger eye. No, they have. Because no, Kaswa is now part of a new regional police yes, command. Yes, my mm. We still hear all... All the bad news about Kaswa. Mm -hmm. We still hear all the all the things about Kaswa. It's one area as a reporter. If you ask me to go and cover elections in that particular area, I, I may shingle, I may resist. You will go. <laughs> I, December I, 7, we are sending you to Kaswa. <laughs> you are sending to Awutu Senya East constituency. I may resist. Prepare. But, but for the sake of the work, I may want to go there. But then I'll take my security 
very, very, very top notch. You get a but, gun too, a license. No, gun. I will get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will get a gun. Mm. But no, but I, if everybody, but, if MBB has a <laughs> gun, NBC has, you media man, I, wear a gun and the bullet. The, the police then may protect me okay. if I seek support from them. Okay. You know, and so if you are sending anybody, the reporter there, the reporter will have at the back of their mind that Charlie, ah, there is not safe for me. So let me try not to, you know, put myself in harm's way mm -hmm. or one way or the mm -hmm. other. Or even in the thick of events, the reporter may not be even willing to report because mm -hmm. also that there's a fear in there that Charlie, if I go close and something happens, what happens? But meanwhile, it is the news that's happening there. So I feel the IGP and these people should give a closer eye to Kaswa. And also the political party should also engage their supporters in that part of town. Yesterday, a reporter, no, on Sunday, a reporter in Yendi with a radio station owned by Abibata. Na, um, um, who is the MPP parliamentary aspirant, candidate aspirant in the just ended primaries, was assaulted and mm -hmm. even injured. And the reason is that MPP people said, hey, you, you are here, we don't trust you. You don't support um, our member of parliament and our candidate for this election. So if even if crocodiles, mm, if crocodiles can eat their own eggs, what would they not do to I'm the flesh MPP of a frog? Supporters. That is simply what is happening. Talking about the electoral commissions, I mean, so there's some last minute changes that I don't know whether I should call it last minute or injury time changes. But there's a transfer that has happened. Uh, Sribo Kweku, we know him. Football, football transfer. Yeah, that I mean, easy uh, transfer. Charlie, <laughs> in, and internal. And they just did the team Basa, like not Basa, yeah. but quick, sharp, sharp. Mm -hmm. Truth is, Electoral Commission has been doing reassignments. Yeah. There was a gentleman who used to speak for the EC. Jack Pasu. Jack Pasu, Eric Kofi Jack Pasu. Yeah, well. I think he was transferred yeah, to Volta Region. To Volta Region as the yeah. answer there also. So transfers are not wrong. But, I mean, this is a gentleman who speaks to us a lot in the media. Now that they've reassigned him, what could be the you reason? Remember Christian Osu Pensu who also had to... Parry. Christian Osu Parry. Christian Osu Parry. Who also spoke for the EC some time. Yeah. was also transferred. And then uh, the lady who became the ambassador. Sylvia Anno. Sylvia Anno. So things happen. Yeah. But this gentleman... Okay, so this is another problem. The Electoral Commission in the past, we've always known her Director of Communication or PRO. Yeah. Sylvia Anno was PRO, Christian Jacquasu. Christian Jacquasu even had a deputy, mm -hmm. a gentleman mm -hmm. who, who later died. They are the PROs of the Commission. Under Jim Manson's Electoral Commission, they don't have a PRO yeah. or a spokesperson. So it's a Director of Electoral Services, Sri Kweku, who speaks. There are many people who think that he shouldn't be doing the speaking. Mm -hmm. If you are Director of Electoral Services, the EC, not to cut, the EC has a, has, has a PRO. Ah, there's a PRO? I think his name is Michael Boedu or something ah, Boedu. I've seen him issue say He's a PR, but he hardly speaks. All communications... A PRO who doesn't speak to All you. communications are channeled to um, Dr. Shrebo to do all the talking. But the EC has a PRO. I, I, I think it's Michael Boedu or I something. I think I've seen because that. Michael I've seen a couple of statements, Boedu, yeah. a couple of statements with his signature and that, mm -hmm. addressing himself mm -hmm. as a PRO, PRO for the commission. Now, if the PRO of an organization like the EC is not speaking, and, may, and Dr. Kwaku is the one doing the speaking, it comes with the organization's own internal arrangement. Mm. Maybe there's an arrangement that on electoral matters, Ms. Dr. Kwaku should do the speaking, UPRO just issued a statement, and ensure that internal communications okay. are done with. Dear Jean Mensah, I studied public relations at the Ghana Institute of Journalism. If you have a public relations officer or a public relations manager, their duty, of course, is not just to be granting interviews. They are supposed to manage your entire communication and PR. That person is supposed to deal with your internal publics, that's the staff of the yeah. Electoral Commission and others, and the external so, publics, who include the media, ourselves, and, of course, the general public. Please, your PRO, can he start speaking to us? If we have questions, can we call him? It shouldn't be Sribo Kweku, who is the Director of Electoral Services, that we should be calling, or Professor Bosman. Is Bosman Professor... Bos or Dr. 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 Bosman, Bosman Asari, uh, who is your deputy? Osamu Tete. Tete. Uh, for him, he does press conferences. <laughs> and for you, madam, yourself too, yeah, you ask an interview. But your PRO should start speaking so that when we have questions, we don't understand. Sylvia Anu would always speak your call and yeah. respond to you. Eric Kofi Jakwasu will always speak your call and respond to you, either on air or off air. And you see, you, you're an electoral commission that has so many issues around you. You have come with Coral Draw, and people are mocking you for using Coral Draw in 2024. They said you could have gone to... AI to get your things done, and you got one or two things wrong. Your election results for 2020 were a big issue. They said you, result, you, you published 5, 000, five different results, so we don't even know which one is which. Of course, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court has cemented which one is the proper result. But your communication is important, so please help us with that. I'm going to read the story on our website. Sri Bokweku reassigned to head EC's training department. Story by Kaba Atawoge of City Newsroom. Uh, dot com. And it says the Electoral Commission's Head of Electoral Services, Dr. Sribo Kweku, 
has been reassigned to head EC's training department effective July 1, 2024. A letter signed by the chairperson of the commission, Jean Mensah, directed the former director of electoral services to hand over properties in his possession to the deputy head of operations before July 1, the date his resignation takes effect. I am, quote, I am pleased to inform you of the commission's decision to appoint you director for training at the head office. In this regard, you are by this letter uh, transferred from the Electoral Services Department as a director of, uh, to head the training department. This appointment takes effect from Monday, July 1, 2024, unquote. Another quote begins, you are required to hand over the commission's property in your custody to the deputy chairperson in charge of operations, unquote, the appointment letter said. So, Sami, that's the story. We don't know who is repla replacing uh, Dr. Sribokwe, who do we? I understand they? the director of uh, EC at the, in, in the Ashanti region, uh, one Dr. Bano, is supposed to come and replace him here in Accra. Sribokwe is coming from Kumasi too, yeah. Ashanti. He was, was Ashanti was, regional, regional director. Regional director. Yeah, a lot of and another Ashanti happening. regional director, Dr. Bano, is also coming to Accra to come and replace Dr. Kweku at the Electoral Commission. It means if you're joining Electoral Commission, you want start, promotion. Start from the Ashanti. Ashanti. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll promote you, but I'll promote you. I don't know, but I mean, of course. We'll but a lot of people have asked that if Dr. Kweku is going to be the director of training, what will be his role? Director of training, as in training EC personnel on or training of political parties no, or, maybe, you maybe, know. Maybe, maybe training the security people so that when someone <laughs> steals BVD machine and is going, you can catch them. Because... <laughs> The BVD machines that have been stolen from the place, well, we, 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 in the we, presence of the armored cars and all of these things. Why? In, in as much as the EC has its own internal mechanism to do things, I think some of these you know, statements should come with a bit of explanation. What, what has prompted this particular mini reshuffle at the commission? Dr. Krakow was, was, was a go-to person. Almost all electoral matters, when you call him, he's willing and able to speak to you, mm, mm. even off record or even sometimes on record to explain things to you. Mm. Now, if you are moving him, now, if you are moving him to become director of training, you know, the EC should explain what prompted this, what will be his role as a director of, you know, training, and, 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 and other things that, that, that may come with us. Mm. Maybe, well, it's not all the time they have to give us explanation. But it's a public just, institution. They Sometimes give, they do. No, but they should just give us a person we can speak to. If <laughs> they have done internal restructuring or internal reshuffling, no, you can't, you can't question them. The Dr. Banoma is, is a go-to person in terms of media because anytime. Um, there are elections or events within Ashanti region. Now, the Electoral Commission has to be involved. I remember the Joseph by election, for instance, almost every time he was giving the media updates okay. on it. Okay. So he's, he's a media friendly person. Okay. We just hope and pray that when he comes to Accra, mm. it will be the same story. But the when he comes to Accra, he's going to be director of electoral service, not director of communication or director but of. But the same role Dr. Kwaku was doing, may, he may be assigned the same role. To come and speak on on electoral matters and the PRO do it. We've ad advised our, our friend Madame Jane Mensa to 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 let the PRO Wait, speak. But if, if, if she listens to us, mm -hmm. then Banner will not do the talking again, and then we would rather be doing the talking. But if, but if she doesn't listen to us, mm -hmm. then the same thing remains. But if Dr. Banner comes and is speaking on electoral matters, what would the PRO speak? Are you, is he is electoral, <laughs> or is there anything else he does that is not election it's matters? Electoral. Maybe then the PRO will be telling us about salary increases and other things. <laughs> This is a situation room on uh, Channel One Television. My name is Umaru Sandamad, and I'm here with Sami Biafi. When we come back, we'll follow the campaign, uh, the candidates. What are they up to? And also, this poll that is out, what do they make of it? Stay with us. You're welcome back. This is a situation room on uh, Channel One Television. My name is Umaru Sandamad, and I'm here with Sami Biafi. Sami, uh, some new research has been mm -hmm. cooked from yeah. the fire. Apart and from Musa Dankwa, someone else has done something. It's else. sizzling hot. You and, know, I like polling. And it's trending. <laughs> I like polling because, you see, polls help us have a sense of what we are working with. Yeah. It's not all the time that polls get it correct. Like in 2016, maybe the pollsters didn't like Donald Trump, so they said he would not win, but he won. He won. And he insulted the pollsters. But a lot of the times, polls work. Exit polls especially. Mm -hmm. I'm advocating for us to have ad ad exit polls so that... Um, in the evening, we get to have an idea who is winning. I think it helps us. Now, ahead of the election, Musa Danko of Global Info Analytics has been doing some wonderful, yeah. doing some wonderful work. We brought him here a number of times and subjected his methodology to thorough analysis and questioning. And today, we woke up to news. And if you can just put up the daily graphic uh, publication for me, uh, Control, where we have uh, seen the state-owned daily graphic publish a poll, uh, which poll is giving us some interesting results, which is different from what Musa Dangwa has been mm -hmm. showing us with Global Info Analytics. 
And because we are on the situation we are the people, yes, so there you have it. Um, Dr. Baumia, preferred candidate. In fact, the headline says 2024 elections. Dr. Baumia, preferred candidate. NDC, most, most popular, popular party, 23.1% undecided. undecided. And that's according to a poll, and that's a publication. Now, this has got many tongues wagging. So we have decided to import the pollster. He's in Kumasi, but we carried him to Accra. <laughs> Professor Smart Sapo, where are you? Join us, please. Come and join us. Come, come, come. Yes. We there, we are free here, so feel free and join. How are you? Oh, yeah, welcome. Thank you, thank you. How thank are you, you sir? Oh, Everything good? Omar, all is well. For those who don't know you, please reveal yourself. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> well, my name is Professor Smart Sapo. Uh, professor or associate professor, or even if you associate, professor. you can still yeah, be called yeah. professor. It's a, it's a rank, so, so you I'm can at that rank. Ah, okay, so you're a prof. So, okay. Professor Spatsap one, but I'm associate professor of statistics, research, and data analytics. That's hard, though. Uh, yeah. Uh, Which university? Kumasi Technical University in Kumasi. So, formerly Kumasi Poly? Formerly Kumasi, but we've been a university well over seven years. Oh, I know, so I know, I know. Mahama gave it to yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I remember. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank so, you, thank you. Um, you are a research teacher, but yes. are you a research conductor? Have you ever conducted any research? Oh, I've been in this business for quite a long time. What uh, researches do you conduct or what do you apart conduct from, in the past? Apart from the academic research, which would definitely be the one to take you to a professorial rank, uh, I've been involved in this elections research also for quite a long time. Uh, I remember what became very topical was the 2020 elections prediction I did. Uh, I predicted uh, a 51.4 victory, first, first round victory for the NPP. Uh, by then, before 2020, the NDC was doing 43%. I predicted uh, an, an increment in their votes from 43 to 47.6. In fact, the final results that was declared in 2020 was not too far away from my uh, predictions, both for the NPP and then the NDC and then those other smaller political parties. Uh, I remember somewhere in 2022 also, there was a very heated elections in Kumase, in, in the Ashanti region, in respect of the original contest. All the conversation in town, all the mood, was in favor of one of the aspirants. And that is what triggered me to find out whether the mood of the environment is, is what is actually going to transpire on the day. Surprisingly, when I visited the 40 seven constituencies that makes up Ashanti region. I found something different. So, uh, contrary to the, the feeling, the discussion in town. So I kept it. I felt like, oh, this one, if I put it out, it's going to be war. Because everybody sees the, w the wave going this way and... You alone, can yeah, you? Uh, yeah, so I kept it. Until uh, a friend of mine, a poster, uh, dropped the findings that suggest that it is a hands-down victory for the person in whose favor the wave was blowing. So I said, oh no, this is a poster. If you actually, you know, research has some relati relativity. It's not supposed to, you, know, you don't expect two research to be the same, yeah. but at least there should be some, some similarities. similarities. So I said, no, no, then let me put mine out. So as I do always, and in all the times that I ever conducted a political or elections research, I organized the media. Uh, your friend Edward in uh, Kumasi, a lot of your friends are my friends, both in Accra and Kumasi. So I called all of them. A lot of media houses came. We discussed it and it went out. When it went out, Umar, in fact, that was the very first time I felt extremely unsafe <laughs> within the environment I've lived for quite a long time. Now you said, Chairman, won't to me, we'll, not, we'll win. <laughs> we'll win. As against the direction of the wave. So I became extremely insecure. I was called by the police command and said, oh, uh, smart. We are giving you a friend uh, who will be with you for quite some time because it, it was like you came here to do your teaching. You know, I, I went there because of mm -hmm. em em employment. Mm -hmm. they said, oh, so yeah. You better shut up and concentrate on, on your, your teaching now and leave your politics <laughs> out. And not enter the poly. <laughs> so, so your f what was your first election related um, research? Yes, so. 2020? Yes, 2020. That is on the, on you didn't the, on do anything the last in 2016. Scale. No, I didn't do much on a large scale okay. in 2016. In fact, even if I did, my intention was not to put out, was just to see okay. whether uh, I would have some okay. confirmation. So let's talk about this, your new research. Um, yes. Did you do it in the name of the faculty, in the name of the school, or in your personal capacity? Oh, okay. Yeah, usually, all that I have done, I have done it in my personal capacity. In fact, the first one 
the uh, elections 2020 or so. I remember I went to my, my dean. By then, I wasn't the dean. Now I am, but I wasn't the dean. So I went to my dean and said, oh, uh, I've had time to engage all con constituencies. And I think this findings I've had is, is stable. I usually use stable. Stable because I have satisfied all the statistical kind of requirements in selecting a very stable uh, uh, respondents. And I think these findings I have or their response are going to be the true representation of what's likely to happen on the day. So I want to put it out in the name of my institute, the Institute of Research, Innovation and Development. Then my dean was quite not too happy because of the way we respond to politics. Uh, people may come and, we come and attack and all those things. So he said, no, let him discuss with uh, my VC and all those things. So he came back and said, no, it's not positive. And so I may want to go ahead and do it in my personal capacity and not to attach the institute's name or the university's name to it. But I mean, fortunately, they still gave me a certain conference room in the school. I didn't have to rent those <laughs> things. So I called the media to that conference room, did it in my personal capacity. And fortunately, it came through, uh, I mean, just about 96%, about 4% error. So about 96% accurate. accurate. Okay. And then the regional elections came. I predicted 57.8% victory for Chama Wuntimi. The results came 57.8% exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now it looks like unofficially, uh, anytime I'm addressed, okay. the university's name is attached. Okay. But the, the, the work was not conducted. Well, by so the this university. current work too was done privately, not yes, for the yes, university. Yes. But you use the students to do. No, no, no. So who helped you administer questionnaires and those things? Uh, yes. So uh, usually when I get a large scale contract, uh, I am a consultant in good standing research design. I'm a research methodologist. I do a lot of large scale research. So if I get any good or big contract, then I attach that yeah, small interest to it. So I just have about, so large scale contracts usually come with their own questionnaire. You see a very bulky questionnaire like that. So you don't have the luxury of also designing another bulky questionnaire to accompany it. Just, so this one, for example, just about 27 questions that I felt were very critical. A few demographics and then few key questions. But who did you work with? That's what I want to know. Who helped you do the work? The people who were helping me, about 1,500 persons were employed, trained. Okay, so not students of your do. school? Oh, some people from my office, some people on attachment. Joined. But in private capacity? Absolutely. Okay. So when you say you were given a contract, who gave you the contract yeah. to do this research? Oh, sometimes from... No, not sometimes, now. Which one? Who gave you this the contract particular one? now? If, if, I, if <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> disclose that one, but it was... Uh, Isn't it important that we know so we can... Trust that you are not working for that in contractor. Favor, yeah, in favor of the person who uh, gave you that uh, contract. In fact, it was not a local contract. It was a World Bank contract, a World Bank sponsored contract. Okay. Uh, in across the country, it's only that I attached few questions on a different set to the people going to administer those. It was a household okay. level questionnaire okay. that was sent to uh, across the country. Please walk us through your methodology. Well, so if you got to the unit which is the constituency or the district, you create clusters based on either electoral areas or known communities within the uh, constituency. So that is the first stage. The clustering is the first stage. And then the second stage is if you enter into that cluster, you create a strata. You group the possible respondents into two. Those aged below 40, so 18 to 39, and then those aged above 40, 40 plus. And so then, how many people should be sampled from each constituency was determined by your total contribution to the current voter register, the 2020 voter register. So there were in all 17 million, about 30 million went to vote. So you have a range between 30 million to 17 million. And then what is maybe constituency one share to that? What is region one? So from the regional level, we know Greater Akka contributed most, followed by Ashanti in that order. If you check my report, the breakdown you see there is not uh, equal, they vary based on your contribution to the voter register. And same was repeated at the constituency level. So you see some constituencies, we interviewed just about maybe 200 people, other constituencies we interviewed about 500 people. Uh, it, was, it was very deliberate, defined by your contribution to the voter register. And that is how the sampling was done. So it was a sub-sample from the, from the bottom and it aggregated into a sample size of yeah, about 60,000, 59,000, 59, 549. Yeah, 549.
So that's the number of people you sampled. Yeah, yeah, Fifty-nine thousand. Yeah. All in all. Every constituency had someone questioned. In a contributor. Every constituency. Every constituency. So you decided to give. With each... the exception of South. Okay. Maybe okay. we can try the next yeah. time. So yes. every constituency. So which one had the highest number of? Um, Respondents. Respondents. Uh, I may have to. I may have to check. But which one had the lowest number? You can check. If I you think I have from Plains, one of the places that Kalio or from Plains, or it's a small. Those okay. small small. Now, only Kalio is Upper West. Uh, yes. from Plains. But if you have your, if you want to use, you can uh, check your phone. Feel free to do that if you want to. I, I, I think I have a copy uh, here. Yeah, okay. you can go to the bottom. I have those uh, figures there. Okay. Region by now. Region. Yeah. Did you call them to interview them, or you hold a question in front of them and ask them, or you give them a questionnaire to answer how, how we, you we needed to We needed to, for the avoidance of all possible doubts, like I know the country I'm in, uh, questions will come left and right, so for the avoidance of any possible doubt, you needed to pick the GPS location of where you are doing the interview. And so my team had to be there. Uh, some about 60% of the respondents we spoke to were willing, graciously gave us their contact numbers as well. Uh, some gave us their full names, their contact numbers for the avoidance of every doubt. In fact, when the need arise, I am willing and ready to share the full data set with GPS locations of places where the interviews were conducted. So you have contact numbers and names of all the 59,000? At least about 70% of them, 60 to 70% of them. And their location? Yeah, yeah. If the person was unwilling to give those details, the telephone number, you just allow. Did you ask their political orientation or their political interest before interviewing them? Did you have those things? In fact, in every constituency, there are politically known people, exposed people, uh, party activists and all those things. We ensured that those persons were excluded. Unless you hid it, and you got interviewed, but if you are a politically exposed person, and we know, and in the communities, they know themselves. So, but, but you don't know them. So you how don't do you know, know yeah. that they are not politically exposed? So when a person goes in there, yes. the, how does the person know this guy is politically tainted, yes. or this guy is not? Yes. So you do a little check, just in town. You check. But the targets were usually businessmen, people in the stores, because you couldn't have gone to everybody's house. And so, if a particular store would have those. Uh, labels or people know that, oh, NDC, then, then, then you raise conversations more before you let the person qualify. And sometimes, question by question, if this question, the person doesn't have the capacity or uh, uh, doesn't satisfy a certain threshold, he doesn't move on to the next question. And so, all in all, we got about 60,000 plus, only that uh, cleaning excluded some. Yeah, thousand. So the people you interview, to your best, the best of your knowledge, they, they are neutral. They are not supposed to be politically exposed or aligned people. So if you do ask them specifically, which party do you support? Is yes, that part of your question? It's a screening. It's a conversation. Then he says, "Oh, maybe I am in party A. I am in party B." No, I'm but you in. come from Accra. You come to Savlogo, and then you just come to me and start asking me which party I belong to. The, how, the, how, the conversation begins before. You get to party affiliation. But you don't tell them that I'm here to conduct a research. I want to know which party you belong to. You don't do that. So the, you see, we are conducting a household level research first. And so at that household level conversation, so they stay in the community, not, not for maybe a day or whatever. So mm -hmm. their presence in the community will be like maybe for five days or whatever, and then okay. they move on. Do you know that there are strongholds, electoral areas which mm. are strongholds of parties? Did you consider those things? Uh, in, uh, in every constituency, of course, there are electoral areas that are strongholds. But in every stronghold, you still will find other political parties also getting a share. It's just the margin of uh, victory so how do you or whatever. Deal with, how do you deal with such... So if you went to K2 South, for yes. instance, how sure are you that the 500 people you interviewed are truly neutral when K2 South is the World it's Bank the of World Bank of... How do you say, determine that? You see, the interest of the subsample characteristics is to make sure that every character or every constituency has a contribution into this sample that we are determining. Definitely, this is a political environment. Like it or not, if the person doesn't even tell you, it doesn't mean the person doesn't belong to one a political party or the other. And usually, it is politically uh, interested persons that will come out and vote. So uh, it's not even like a strict ex ex uh, exclusion. Just that a party chairman, a party days, so typically known party people will be excluded. Obviously. But of course, in every given environment, yeah, it's, it's allowed that 
the person so, have an interest in one or two. Okay, but you don't let them declare that. You you are hoping no, no, no. that they are neutral. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what duration? What was the duration of this work? Uh, April. April 1 to April 30. So 30 days. So just yes. one month. 30 yes, days. one month. Right. Yes. Let's talk about what you found. Well, so um, number one, so four levels, right? The first level is the activity, engagement, the popularity. I call it popularity of the various political parties in those uh, constituencies. And you found that in a good number of the constituencies or uh, yeah, in a good number of those constituencies we engaged, you can see that yeah, in some areas, the NPP as a party is quite active and popular. Uh, the NDC is quite popular. Those smaller parties all together constituted 3.6% of popularity of political parties in the various constituencies. And then the NDC as a political party uh, got 38 points. Yeah, so per, per your way, yes. the NDC, among the, po the popular political yes. parties, it was the NDC. Yes, And the figures they had was 38.8, um, representing yes. a figure of 23,080. Absolutely, of the respondents. Of the respondents. And then, that's for the NDC. The NPP, and the NPP comes to 34.5, uh, with a yeah. figure of 20,564. Yeah, right. And then the other political parties, 2,167, uh, which yeah. is 3.6. And then the undecided, yes, 13,735, yeah. which is 23.1. And then the total marks out to 59,546. Yeah. Yeah. Prof, the question would be, you say that NDC is the most popular, mm. yes. and yet the NDC candidate is losing. Uh, Don't answer the question. When we take this break and return, <laughs> you explain it to uh, me. This uh, is Situation uh, Room uh, on Channel One TV. My name is Umar Usanda Amado, and I'm here with Sami Wiafi. Yeah. We are interviewing Professor Smart Sapon, uh, who's just done a research um, into the 2024 election polls. Stay with us. You're welcome back. This is the Situation Room on uh, Channel One Television. I'm here with Prof. Smasawa. Uh, Prof, if you could just look behind you. Yes, sure. 2024 elections, Dr. Baumia preferred candidate, NDC most popular party, 23.1% yeah. undecided. Yeah. Explain why Dr. Baumia will win in an election that NDC is the most popular party. Good. Umar, so the first point is to note that this is not an end line survey. So we are not talking about who will win, not yet. In the midline, we would have them engage, we would have had them engage the constituencies more aggressively than they have now, and then the variation will be examined. By the time we are at the end line, we can come and say, this person is likely to win, this person is not likely to win. We are not there yet. If our posters should not be in a hurry, uh, six, seven months to election, to begin to talk about who is likely to win or who is not likely so to win. So this does not mean you are saying Baumia is likely to win? That's not what we even measured. We measured, number one, which party is most popular as in yeah, the activity level in the constituency. Mm -hmm. And then, who is your preferred presidential candidate? It's not like who, if elections were to be held today, who will you vote for? Okay. It would have been a different question altogether. But this publication is not wrong. No, it's not wrong it's at correct. all. It's correct. It's not wrong but at all. But it's interpretation. Terms of, absolutely. In terms of the preferred candidature, mm -hmm. a lot of the respondents we spoke to preferred the candidature of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to the candidature of uh, His Mahama. Excellency John Dramani Mahama, a two percentage points ahead of uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Even though John Mahama's party is, is popular. Yes. So I'm going to explain that. Explain. I have established the fact that this is preference level. Mm -hmm. When it, mean, it remains like this to the end line, mm -hmm. then you can stand on and say, then he is likely to be okay. voted for. It's okay. too early yet. So okay. now, is it possible that, and, and I ask these questions, I've engaged a lot of people over the period, over just within 24 hours, I've engaged so many people. My question is, if we should reserve the 2024 election for, say, NPP members alone, so every other political party member, please stay off. It is December 7th. Elections is, are reserved for only MPP alone. Uh, are you very sure that Dr. Mahmoud Baromia is likely to get 100%? Knowing very well that here, there was an election where uh, His Excellency President Mama was the only one contesting presidential primaries, but he still couldn't get 100%. 
in the central region, one part of the two. So people are surprised that in the same uh, two children from the same mother, say let's say parliamentary candidate and presidential candidate, why am I saying that uh, the popularity of the party can favor one of them and not the other? In the central region recently, uh, NPP performed woefully at the party level, losing close to 13 or so seats in the central region. In that same environment, on that same voting day, the president gets more votes and, and wins the region in terms of presidential, but the party level pieces lose woefully okay. at the same poll, at the same polling station. What you have brought to the statistics, we've displayed it. If you can just go to that screen. Yes, sure. Um, go to that screen and talk to us about what you have asked. Prof, this way. Uh, okay. walk, walk to the screen, feel free, yes. So, go. Prof, this way. Uh, yeah. So, no, no, just allow him. I mean, just okay, give him sure. just that one. Just yes, that one. No, sure. yeah, stand here, stand here. Can I take no, come, this one? Come to this side. Come to this I should side. come this uh, way. That's right, that's right. Yes, explain this to me. Yes, so what I'm saying is that no, no, okay. ignore, ignore, ignore it. Just yeah. So don't, don't, don't flip it. No. Don't swipe it. Just, All right. Uh, just leave it as is. This Explain. is fine. The top Very question well. says preferred political party. Absolutely. Question: Which political party are you likely to support in the 2024 presidential election? Yeah, so this is the party level. Okay. And this is where popularity was examined. So you have these colors representing the NDC as a political party. This one, the blue one, representing the MPP as a political party. These are the regional breakdowns which accumulated into this national summaries. Okay. So I put out this national summaries, 38.8. These are the regional contributions to this. If we take the blue, or let's take the yellow, you can see that the blue is ahead of the yellow here in Ashanti. Mm -hmm. The blue is ahead of the yellow at Ahafo. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that for Bono, Ashanti, and Ahafo, the popularity of the MPP is a little above that of the NDC. Mm -hmm. You come to Bono East, and you see the yellow above the, the blue. Mm -hmm. You come to central region and you see a near tie. Mm -hmm. uh, eastern region, the blue is above. Greater Accra, the, uh, we are doing the yellow or the blue. So the yellow is above, so NDC Greater is above. Accra, the NDC is preferred. Absolutely. Okay. So all in all, from this graph, eight regions have a very good popularity in terms of the NDC as a party than the MPP. Okay. Those eight regions are... Bono East, uh, Greater Accra, Northern, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The Western North has so far not been most, is the most unexploited region by the two parties. Okay. So their popularity is not too distinct. They are par. Prof, I have a question for you which is not now. A research is as credible as a researcher. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Franklin Kujo, Imani president, has mm, gone to I've Facebook. Seen, I've seen that. He has decided to publish a number of stories attributed to you. Yes. Pointing to you being an MPP person. Mm -hmm. Number one, leave EC alone to work, Professor Smart Sapon. Number two, you are demanding too much. Give EC independence to do their job, Professor mm. Smart Sapon, to NDC. Question number three, 2024 election, the butterfly should forget it. Ashanti region will always love the elephant party. Mm -hmm. Professor Sapon jabs Alan, jab. <laughs> number four, put election committee in check, Professor Sapon. Number five, take EC as your wife, Professor Sapon to NDC. <laughs> number six, Baumia is the most active vice president under this fourth republic, yeah. Professor. Mm -hmm. Plenty of things, cataloged. Yeah. Then Professor Ransford Jampo also, also comes in. digs into you. <laughs> mm -hmm. this is comic relief. That anyway. you are not credible. <laughs> yeah. Are you an MPP person? Yes, Umar. I am not a member of any of the existing political parties here in Ghana. Which one do you belong to? Outside Ghana? Uh, na no, no, I mean, yeah. I have <laughs> we all love politics. Yeah. You see, the reason why uh, Franklin and Prof. Jumpo would uh, catalog these ones is because apart from me being a researcher, I get the opportunity. You invite me. Many other media houses invite me to comment on other issues of national interest. All those publications you are referring to are attributable to me and I accept them. For example, what makes me belong to one party or the other? If I say, oh, uh, EC is the referee, okay? He's like your wife, like it or not. The elections can never be handed over to Sami or maybe the NDC or whoever to handle it. There is never going to be a day that the MPP is going to be given that referee position. And the person in the middle, your wife, I use that word advisedly, will not be as perfect as any other wife that we may be having in our okay. homes. 
So but when are... you accept that he is your wife, mm -hmm. you will learn to live with him. So you are not MPP? I, I've, I've never been a member of any political party here in Ghana. Active. So if they pull out any party card, it's in your They should pull out party card. Let's leave it here. We'll be back next week. Thank you so Omar, much. Omar, they should pull out party card. That's <laughs> Professor Smart uh, Sapong. Uh, he's a um, lecturer, no, the dean, right? At a director of research and innovation, Kumasi Technical Kumasi, University. Kumasi uh, Technical yeah. University. My name is Omar Rosanda Amadou. I did this with Sami Wiafi. We'll be back next week on The Situation Room on Channel One. Thank you for watching us. <laughs> Thank you.